It's the number one killer of dogs. It's not accidents, it's not disease. She had me really pinned down. Um, she bit me um, a couple of times. She uh, Once I had like big red marks on my hand, and this is through a leather mitten, okay? He would block you in corners, so you weren't, you couldn't get out. Like I was in the kitchen and you blocked me in the kitchen and I wasn't able to leave my own kitchen. Like when you're scared to be in your own house um, and you can't move around in your own house. Behavior problems are the number one killer of dogs. Countless pets are abandoned, surrendered and euthanized because of problem behaviors. Aggression is the most common and most serious behavior problem in dogs. It's also the number one reason why pet parents seek professional help from trainers, veterinarians, and behaviorists. He's our child. Would you give a child up? No. Wouldn't. So we just force people into listening to us. There's four million surrendered to shelters, 2.2 million don't come out alive. So it's like an annual holocaust. To put the dog number in perspective, the 2.2 million dogs, there's about 9 million born every year. So it's almost a quarter of the entire population that's born every year is put down every year, which is horrible. And actually, behavior is known to be um, the main reason for surrender. It's something like 70% of dogs going to shelters. Some say more, some say a little bit less. I mean, we know what the behavior problems are. We know that the majority are aggression. The question is, can a dog's diet be part of the problem? While Canada has no national data on canine population, dog-related deaths and injuries, in the United States, more than 4.5 million people are bitten per year. 800,000 require medical attention, and at least half of them are children. We set out to explore what links may exist between canine nutrition and aggressive behavior. Aggression is a killer, and nutrition is rarely considered as a contributing factor or as a potential aid in addressing canine behavior problems. I'm part of a team behind a television series dedicated to fresh food for canines. One of our own colleagues was at her wit's end with her yellow lab crossed with a German Shepherd's aggression problem. No, Ben, stop. That's enough. Stop it. After five trainers and numerous vet visits, she was searching for a rescue group that would take an aggressive dog to no avail. As dog food obsessed folk, we wondered if food could be part of her dog's problem. What we discovered is that there isn't much information readily available with regard to potential links between canine aggression and nutrition. In her case, most of the dog's aggression seemed to occur within a half hour of eating. I don't know if food could cause his aggressive behavior. It could if, um, if it upsets him and that's just how he's communicating and we can't help him because he can't tell us. As interest increases in foods for ourselves that help prevent disease and help maintain optimum health, we are starting to extend that trend to our pets. Pet owners are often considering non-traditional foods for their dogs, from grain-free and vegetarian kibbles to raw food to a home-cooked diet. Of course, we know that dogs are not people, but can we assume that food influences their behavior as well? We've all heard of mood foods, Foods that are connected to our moods. Omega-3 fatty acids, magnesium, tryptophan, folate and other B vitamins, chocolate and low glycemic foods have all been studied to assess their impact on mood. Dark chocolate stimulates the production of endorphins, chemicals in the brain that bring on feelings of pleasure. It also contains the chemical serotonin, which acts as an antidepressant. And some of us crave a big bowl of pasta or pizza. Why do we reach for these carbs? The connection between carbohydrates and mood is tryptophan, a non-essential amino acid. As more tryptophan enters the brain, more serotonin is synthesized in the brain and mood tends to improve. 
and there is some evidence that it helps you tolerate pain and can even help you sleep. That same chocolate cupcake high can come crashing down as the combo of white flowers and sugar makes your mood swing low. Skipping meals makes us irritable. Indigestion, constipation, and other food-related conditions can also make us miserable. Thankfully, most of us humans have the power of reasoning and self-control to curb any aggression we might feel. Dogs, on the other hand, do not. I think skipping a meal in a dog is no more than skipping a meal in a person. The biggest behavioral effect on skipping a meal or health and disease is to cause the irritability. And if you cause irritability and sensitivity, some animals are just less tolerant. They might be irritable when you approach them. They might become aggressive. They might threaten. They might not want to socially interact. So, do experts, vets, behaviorists, trainers, and pet food companies believe that there is a link between canine nutrition and aggressive behavior? Yeah, I believe a diet can influence behavior. Um, in a way, what you eat is what you are. Where diet comes into them, you know, maybe diet does play into some of the aggression cases. Whether you could fix those problems with diet alone, I don't think you could fix many of them with diet alone, although fixing a diet would be a component of treatment. I don't think a dog's diet or a change in a dog's diet is going to have any significant effect on behavior. That doesn't mean that I don't change diets or alter diets or alter ingredients looking for that case that might, but until I do see them, I'm still somewhat skeptical of going down that route. There's clearly um, links between nutrition and all kinds of issues, particularly behavior. Um, there's the same thing is true in people, and in fact, there was just a conference on psychopharmacology and the effect of thyroid on changing the psyche and behavior of people. So it's not just it's not just food, it can be uh, hormonal imbalances with food, it can be over exposure to environmental toxins or vaccines or whatever, but food is critically important here. Digestibility is very important for a number of reasons. Not only can it improve behavior just because the overall well-being of that pet or even of a person. When you eat well, you feel well. If you think of something just as simple as obesity and weight management, so if we can keep a pet with a good body condition score in a good weight, then obviously we affect that pet's behavior in terms of having ability to exercise, have an ability to interact with the family. So there are all kinds of things we can do that are going to have a general uh, impact on behavior for sure. I think that uh, some of the problems, I mean, really and truly, there are cases that are I have allergic responses to some of the foods. And a lot of the stuff is from the commercial foods where you've got a conglomeration of stuff put in there. You don't even know what you've got. That's one of the problems with the commercial foods. You don't even know what you've got in there half the time because they'll, they'll camouflage what they're putting in, you know, byproducts and things that you don't really know what's there. And there may be elements and preservatives in particular that are causing problems. If you're feeding on a raw format or, or you're doing your home cooking, you at least control the situation. You know what you're doing. Does that have a behavior implication? Absolutely. And I can verify that by some of our cases that you change the food, behavior improves, their general health improves. I see it practically every day. It's amazing what a benefit good nutrition has on the, our pets. So, most experts all seem to agree that overall, there are links between canine nutrition and behavior. And so we know as brains age in both humans and animals, that they have an impaired ability to use glucose, which is an energy source. It's like gasoline for your car. And so, as they age, they're less able to use the glucose that's in the blood. And so, if the brain is not getting energy, you can imagine it's not going to function as properly. So by using something called medium chain tri triglycerides or MCTs that are found in coconut oils, they can provide an alternative source of energy for the brain. And this really helps out older dogs that have cognitive impairment. It starts with digestibility, 
and ends with satiety. We do have components of the diets that are going to affect behavior. Uh, one of the diets we have on the veterinary side is called satiety formula, and we have clinical trials. We have good scientific proof that when these components are in the diet, uh, the time that the food remains in the stomach is longer, and the passage of that food into the intestine and the passage of the ingest through the ingest or the ingesta in the intestine is slower. They feel fuller for a longer period of time, and you get better owner compliance when they're not uh, feeling the pressure from their pet for more food. Um, so a shape such as this, for a weight control formula, um, with the hole in the center, is very low density and occupies a lot of space in the bowl. So visually, the bowl is much fuller. Uh, so to the animal, there's actually a psychological effect that makes them feel like they're eating much more food, which also helps curb that begging behavior. One reason a dog might be acting out is that he's in pain. Uh, we can do things with diets to alleviate uh, pain, and pain can be a very uh, dramatic component of a pet's behavior, and pets mask their pain. They don't wear it on their sleeve like we do. They can be very stoic, but they do suffer from pain, and it can affect how they behave. And if we can manage that, partly with nutrition, maybe with medication, we're going to get that puppy back. And we have lots of testimonials that say when, uh, when the, my pet's pain was managed, I got the dog back that I had years ago. This is a good start, but obviously it does not curb aggression in every dog. The truth of the matter is that it's not easy to figure out what's causing aggressive behavior. If we, if we could have gone to the back of the book and looked at the answer right away, yeah. um, it would have probably three, four months worth of bickering and arguing and stress and as you see, the heartache that goes with it of not knowing. And you said to me, I will help you with her. I was afraid she was going to have to be euthanized. of this topic begins in Orange County, California, where we met with Dr. W. Jean Dodds. This Wonder Woman is considered to be one of the foremost experts in pet care. She's a world-renowned vaccine research scientist and a practicing vet in Southern California, where she founded Hemopet in 1986. Hemopet is a non-profit animal blood bank, greyhound rescue, and a diagnostic specialty laboratory. She has more than 150 research publications and is a published author. Dr. Dodds is an inventor on numerous patents, including NutriScan, a unique saliva testing system designed to detect food intolerances in dogs. The first question we have for Dr. Dodds is, are there links between food allergies and aggressive behavior in dogs? The fact of the matter is true food allergies, which are an acute reaction, acute, um, um, immediate or short term, are quite rare. They don't occur. They're not like you eat peanut butter and you keel over. It's not the same thing at all. What's common is food intolerance and sensitivity. And that can happen um, two to 72 hours after an individual animal has eaten the food. So sometimes the people don't connect the food with the problem that occurs two days later or three days later. And also it doesn't occur until the animals had the same food for a period of time. Uh, it doesn't have to be a long time, it could be a couple of months. Well, I decided that when I was working more and more in this functional foods individualized nutrition field, that we needed to improve our diagnostics. How to determine what animals should or shouldn't eat. And in saliva, we measure IgA, the secretory immunity, which is in all your secretions, including your tears, um, and also IgM, which is your primary immune response that occurs when you first see something that maybe your body shouldn't see. And I thought, I really can't tell people what they should feed. That's a huge can of worms. But maybe I can find out if animals shouldn't eat certain foods and whether the body reacts to it. And that's how we developed NutriScan, which is patented for the dog and also now the, ho now the cat. And we're working finally on the horse. We sent a test sample from our colleague's dog without telling anyone at their NutriScan lab about food intolerance suspicions. The dog had recently been switched